Good afternoon, Keenan. Uh, let's give it a minute or so. Um, the moment it's just me and you. Are you on campus, Keenan? Okay, no, no. The reason for me asking is I know that sometimes you, sometimes you prefer to uh, do your online sessions from campus. Okay, that's good. Um, as I said, let's let's give it a minute. Um, I'm not sure. Nobody has. Um, have you found it? Was it difficult for you to get uh, the link this morning because uh, Lawanda says it's not on his calendar or on his timetable? I mean, I checked. There wasn't a problem. Thanks, Keenan. Um, you guys, um, are you guys busy with assignments? Are you submitting assignments this week? Um, I'm trying to establish maybe a reason why um, nobody else has joined us yet. Are you busy with assignments this week? Are you, is there a few submissions due? Uh, any other assignments for other modules, um, Keenan? Welcome, um, Stanley. How are you doing? Fine, Sonny. Can't complain. Sun's out. A bit chilly. Um, I got my second jab, so I'm full throttle now. Let's see what uh, the rest of the day holds. So far, there's no pains and aches. Right. Uh, it seems that. Um, yeah, we're five minutes into the session already. Nobody else has joined apart from um, from Stanley and um, um, and Keenan. So we'll continue with the session. It is being recorded as we speak. Um, let's see um, what we what do we normally do when we start off on a Monday. Normally on a Monday we do good news, bad news Monday, right? I've got my good news, bad news. Um, anything that um, any of you want to share? Good news, bad news? Always good to start with good news. Good. It's all good. It's all good. No bad news. Everything good for you. No bad news. Yeah. We'll keep something like this. <laughs> well, I have to admit, um, the same year, uh, Luanda has joined us as well. Thanks, Luanda. Um, 
Good morning, you. Uh, any good news, bad news? Uh, it's good news, bad news Monday. Um, how's, how's your, um, what's your experience? What's, what's in the news that's good for you? And something you read, something you heard, and you thought, oh my word, that's awesome, or oh my god, that's bad. Um, anything? Mm, is there a clash, I wonder? Okay, um, you can choose whichever one you want to attend, obviously. Thanks for um, letting me know. Um, it makes sense now that, you, that you've that you asked on the time, about the timetable this morning when you emailed me. Um, what we'll do then is we'll continue with the session. It is being recorded, um, and as I said, obviously, students who are live, um, they benefit, um, and the others have to watch the recording. Um, right. Good news, bad news. I don't have any bad news for this Monday. Uh, I only have good news. Like Stanley, um, it's it's been a good Monday. I've had my second jab, so I'm cool. But um, there are some good news that I want to share. Uh, those for the two on the screen is for me to, to, to do the, um, probably some of it might be for you. <laughs> None of it might be for you. But um, two of my good news items, I decided to do two good news items because I don't have any bad news items. Um, I asked this question because your parents might know, but some of you might know as well. Have you ever heard of the pop group ever? I'm pretty sure. Mamma Mia, does it ring a bell? Those songs, that musical. Uh, I know it's way before your time because this band was established in 1972. They started performing in 1972. So it's way, it's almost way before my time. Um, in, in this, but we grew up with them and they were one of those, they were probably one of, um, after the Beatles, one of the first super bands um, globally. Um, anybody heard of ABBA before? Does the name ring a bell? Yes, no? Okay, no wonder I said ever. Well, why is it good news for me? Good news for me, probably not as much for you, um, being Gen Z's, is that um, ever after 40 years of not performing or producing any new music, um, they are from Sweden, yes. Poland, close enough, no wonder they're a Swedish band. Uh, as a matter of fact, the two people on the left on that image were actually husband and wife, and the two on the right were also husband and wife. So it was two couples, basically, who um, Swedish couples. Um, they have now decided after all these years that they are going to perform again. Uh, they've also recorded new music. Um, and I've, I, as a matter of fact, over the weekend, I listened to one of the new um, uh, songs, and it was actually... It wasn't that bad at all. Um, <laughs> yes. um, and what will happen is they obviously are they're way older than I am. So they definitely uh, borderline elderly. But what they will do is that um, they're going to use holograms to do virtual performances which I think is probably the route that many artists are going to go. Uh, it means that you can actually be in different um, venues because there's just a hologram that's um, transported into the room wherever you are or the uh, facility wherever you are. They could be in Stockholm and or they could be in Cape Town and they could actually perform. And the hologram is, is, um, is shown to a crowd of, um, of 
of, of fans attending a concert in London, for that matter. That's just how I think um, um, many of, um, of, of the bands um, are attempting to survive now globally because we still cannot travel um, unrestricted um, globally. So for me, that was good news because they're making music again. Quite enjoyed the music, um, and yeah, it's part of um, the music that I grew up with. And then Marmite, Marmite, I said a while ago, has disappeared off the shelves because they have a problem with a certain ingredient, the yeast, um, the brewer's yeast that they use in the um, 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 you got a message that there was no personal selling today. Um, sorry, let me just get behind this. Um, Luandu, a um, message from whom? Because um, the only person that will cancel that would be would be me or can be me. Hi, Turpin. Thanks for joining, Turpin. So, um, good afternoon, sir. Sir, I'm not sure. Is there perhaps a clash yeah. or do we actually have um, personal selling today? Don't we always have personal selling this time of a Monday? Be yeah, because on the on the timetable and a canvas, it says that we, that the, the HCM have AMH12. That's why everybody's in that class now. Okay. Um, no, time tables haven't changed according to me, and um, I think that's that's why I'm trying to get behind this. Um, and were you notified? Let me see. I'm, I'm going to admit, Andre, as well. Let's continue this conversation amongst us because um, my timetable says hi, welcome, Andre. My timetable says that we have um, personal selling the eighth and the ninth periods on a Monday. We've had it for four weeks. Uh, and there's been no change in my timetable. Um, so I am confused at the moment. Um, obviously, I'm trying to get behind this now and I need your input on this. Um, who informed you that there's no personal selling or did you just go to the timetable um, or to the calendar and saw the clash? Um, the timetable that they sent out um, like via the Canvas app, we all got notified that the new timetable will be effective from the 24th of August. And on that um, timetable, it says today that we only have AMH12 and BCH12 starting at 20 past 1. That's mm -hmm. the only two um, modules they said we have today. And Tuesday, it says that we off. And yeah, so we I think everybody was following that timetable they sent out and she's like i don't know which side to turn to sir okay right um i will follow up with this um as i said i don't carry any knowledge of that um of, of timetable changes um if it's a 24th then it should have been um if it's a 24th of august then yeah that's that's some time ago um when did you usually have AM um, um, 12? Um, was it? Uh, on what days do you usually have that um, that session? Last week it was the same, Jakob. Has it always been the same? Last week, last week was the same. I mean, I, I don't know. This timetable totally confuses me. Some days it shows, some days it doesn't. It's like, I don't know what Stadio is doing in the back end. Okay. Um, let me let me just have a look here on the twenty. Yeah, because I th uh, I meant like some of us thought maybe it was a clash on Canvas and it's not mm. corresponding with the actual timetable they could send out to us. So we thought okay, it might be an error, so we're going to follow the timetable that they sent out to us, the new one. But 
Wedding. Yes, they said it's effective from the 24th of August 2021, sir. Okay, so there was a, um, obviously that's why last week would have been a clash as well being... Yep. And the week mm. before it was your session. Now last week and this week it's it's a there's a clash. Okay. Um, what I'll do is, obviously, um, the session is being recorded. Uh, I will follow up because, as, as far as I know, this is, <laughs> this is the session for the semester. But anyway, um, I'll clarify that today, so don't worry about that. Um, uh, I'll continue and I'll finish the session. I'll record it, and obviously then people can have a look at it because we... Uh, I don't want to... Um, half of you is probably now attending the other session and half is attending yeah. this session or no, nobody's there or everybody's here or everybody's there and nobody's here. So I'm not exactly sure. Um, and right. I will have to familiarize myself with that because that was uh, a complete surprise to me. Um, right. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue with the session and finish it. Um, which, is just for the sake, um, uh, just for the sake of clarity, do you have a double period um, as well um, for for the other module, or is it just for uh, twenty past one? Thank you. It says twenty past one until fourteen forty-five. So it's double period, sir. Double period. Okay. So that was a double period that I usually have um, had so far on the Monday. Okay, what I'll do is um, I'll continue and I complete this session. Um, what what will happen is I will obviously complete this chapter as well. Uh, let me see. We've not wasted enough time, but we, there is sufficient time for us till till two o'clock to actually finish the session. I'll finish the recording as well. I'll upload the recording um, in the second period that starts five past two. Go to the new timetable. Go to the second period of that double period. Um, and um, then I will correspond with Stadio and see in the meantime what was the what was the issue. Okay. Thanks, Jakob. Just for today, let's do that. Um, I'll finish the session now till two o'clock. I'll record it and I'll upload it, and then uh, you guys go to the go to the other module for the for the ninth period, and I will check after that. Um, okay. So, so you're going to finish this first class. Uh, I've, I've started and then, we can, the, then we go to the other class afterwards. Um, that that's what I'm going to recommend at the moment okay. because I mean, who, who do you know who's in the other class at the moment that you know of your classmates? Yes, I don't know anyone who's not here. Maybe I don't know. I wasn't at the other class. I just clicked on this one. <laughs> uh, why don't you click on this one? Didn't you have a notification? Because you're my favorite. You're my favorite teacher, and last time you helped me with my answers for my test. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see what happened on the Monday. Um, um, okay, I'm so kidding. Wait, I'm kidding. Andre, your timetable says there's a this this um you've got a different module now. That's what your timetable says. Let me show you what my timetable says. I appreciate that. Thanks. That's my timetable. You see this? You see this? Yeah. Eight o'clock this you see the eight o'clock session, eh? Yep. Tarquin. That wasn't there this morning. Oh, could I? I was yes, I was here to offer seven o'clock. That was not here. Even at eight o'clock I checked, nothing was here. It comes up every week after yeah. like nine o'clock or ten o'clock. It just it just appears on my calendar. Every week I'm telling you it's it's insane, man. It's, it's confusing, like completely confusing. Heavy. So Okay, I'm glad. Um, I'm you see it, Yaku? I can, I can see it clearly. Yes. Um, yeah. hmm. Look, just have a chat with him. Let's get the session going. Okay. Let's All learn good? something. Yeah. All good. Oh, good. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'll take it up. So let's let's just let me just finish this session for. Um, um, Obviously, mm -hmm. right. Let's continue with the session. Um, we are with um, on. We were very close to the end of chapter um, of, of chapter six. Um, I, I, 
AI. Our technology is also giving me a headache this morning. Yeah, maybe maybe you should just write it off as one of those Mondays. It's those one of those confusing Mondays because um currently um it's playing games with me and it doesn't want to give me the PowerPoint that I just had five minutes ago. Oh my word. Let's repeat uh, let's 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 um click reboot and let's start from scratch. Right. Um, what I have, and as I said, I've started off with a good news, bad news thing, um, like we usually do on a Monday. For me, the good news is that uh, ABBA's back and they are performing again, although it's via hologram. <laughs> and um, we're also going to have, um, apparently very soon, we're going to have Marmite back on the shelves too, because Marmite um, had a problem. They struggled to um they struggled to uh, find sufficient yeast um a brewer's yeast which was one of the key ingredients in in them um, actually manufacturing marmite and the problem is because of um because of the COVID restrictions not too many people actually or less people were drinking beer so less um less less beer were, uh, were actually well, i'm not saying less people are drinking less beer but uh, i think Less beer was brewed, and therefore brewer's yeast was um, um, there was a, a lower supply in brewer's yeast, which was necessary in Marmite. But apparently, from next month on, Marmite will be stocked up again on the shelves. Um, interesting, and it just shows you what, um, how, <laughs> how difficult, um, um, how widely the pandemic impacts on <laughs> on our daily lives. Absolutely astonishing um, when I heard that. But anyway, um, just good news, no bad news. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left in the session. We've got 15 minutes. What um, I've sort of touched on already last um, um, on Friday is that when you qualify your prospects, remember we're still busy with the chapter six. Chapter six is, um, is about um, the prospects uh, or prospecting, finding uh, leads that you can qualify to become prospects. For leads to become prospects, you need to ensure that they have a need um, or a use for the product that you are selling. They must have the ability to buy. Then also important to, um, um, to qualify them is the size and the importance of the transaction. Is it um, one second from the bottom and immense your urgent need that needs to be satisfied? Does that person have the authority to buy or are you actually um, um, is there somebody else that's going to uh, make the final decision? Very often happens when businesses do business with each other. Right. So um, just to clarify, uh, there are three different categories when we, um, or four different categories when um, uh, um, related to, um, to referrals and, and, and in the prospecting process. Uh, leads are the people who we don't know, they know nothing about us, we know nothing about them, um, and we are qualifying them to become prospects. Um, referrals could be people that uh, could be leads or it could be prospects. Referrals are usually prospects because the referrals are usually done by satisfied customers. Therefore, they almost sort of pre-qualify that lead for us or that prospect for us. And then sometimes salespeople leave, salespeople um, go to different businesses or they um, change careers. Now the customers that have been dealing with that salesperson are now left basically um, orphaned and they refer to as orphans. People who still do business with the company are obviously customers, right? Making an appointment is what prospecting is about. You're trying to find out if the customer has a need for your product. You're not trying to do anything yet. You're not selling. You're not. You're establishing um, um, the need of the customer, um, of the lead, to enable you to qualify them to become a prospect. Okay. Why sometimes it's difficult to make that contact via telephone? It's because you cannot see the customer. You cannot see the expression on their faces. Um, and like we've done from chapter three, chapter two, when we did communication, 
that non-verbal communication, those cues about them frowning or um, crossing their hands or rubbing their hands or touching their face, rolling their eyes, those are all cues that it will indicate to us um, if the customer is interested or not. And because of that, um, being absent when you're on the phone, it makes it sometimes very difficult. Um, when you're making an appointment, there are ever three things that you have to ask yourself as a salesperson. What's the best time to phone the prospect? What's the best place to actually see the prospect when you are making the appointment? Remember, you're phoning the prospect to make an appointment. And what's the best product that you can offer them? And that's where all the planning comes in, where you are going to find as much information as possible about the customer before you actually pick up the phone, because that's where the planning component comes in. Getting appointments, using the phone, very good. But um, there are reasons why the potential customer, the prospect who's picking up the phone, um, can say no over the phone. Any phone call is an interruption, regardless what time you phone. During business hours, after hours, you're interfering with whatever that other person was busy with. Doing nothing is also um, is, is also an interference. But then again, people also hold the argument to say, but if you pick up the phone, <laughs> I mean, then um, why don't you pick up the phone in the first place if you don't want to be interrupted? Well, we're not judging yet. Uh, any phone call is actually an interruption of either leisure time or of business or work, work out or work that you're busy doing with. Sometimes also, um, often salesperson is just repeating the same script and therefore they are not interesting. And, um, and you know what, that's why um, prospects say no for you over the phone. Um, also, often they believe that when you pick up the phone, even before you've listened to what they're offering, they're going to waste your time. That's a that's common perception. Um, and then generally, a lot of um, um, salespeople are just not professional enough. Uh, they come across as telesalespeople with a, with a prepared script um, and um, a boring prepared script. And um, would you buy something from someone like that? Would you um, go through the trouble of making an appointment so that person can actually bore you even more with more information for something you might not need at the end of the day? Um, so those are common reasons why um, it's difficult sometimes for salespeople to get that appointment because the customer just, they don't see any value in it. What can you do to help you? You can do some mental exercises. A lot of people prepare mentally. <laughs> Andre, I'm going to go here with, um, with, with uh, um, the Wolf of Wall Street again, Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seen in the restaurant, you know, um, him and another couple. That was his routine. That's when he went through. That's how he relaxed himself. I actually watched uh, um, 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 him actually um, explain that in, in, a, in a sort of um, unseen um, scenes. He said that he actually, that wasn't part of the script. He was actually in the process of experimenting with different ways to relax himself before he was actually shooting scenes. And somebody suggested to him that he does this and he did that kind of exercise and actually it became part of, um, part of the movie, part of the scene, but that wasn't um, the intention initially. Um, do it in a standing position. Most of us do that nowadays. We walk around with our phones um, short as possible. You are trying to just inform and get an appointment. You don't want to sell. If you, if you give too much information now over the phone, the person is not going to, um, why, why bother to actually see and meet you then um, for a demonstration? You've given him everything he needs or everything he doesn't need. Okay. Use the prospect's name as frequently as possible. It's as if you're having a conversation with somebody sitting right next to you that you know. Use the name. I've used this before. Put a smile in your face and in your voice. There will be a smile. If there's a smile in your face, there will be a smile in your voice, even if you are, especially when you're talking over the phone. What I did many, many years ago is I put a mirror next to me. 
I thought, you know what, immediately if you put a mirror right next to you when you're uh, on your desk here, looking at yourself. So basically, your, 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 your face is reflected in the mirror. Um, and you know what? Um, it brings a smile to your face. Nine out of ten times it brings a smile to your face. If there's a smile on your face, the smile will reflect in your, um, in your tone of voice when you actually talk on the phone. Try that next time. And be polite. You made a mistake. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Huh? This is this is just a typical Monday for me. I've made a mistake. I'm, my apologies for that. Um, and then you go on, right? Be courteous. Do not sell. Do not attempt to sell a product. Sell the appointment. We've heard that before. Be organized. Organized means plan, because if you plan, you will be to the point. You'll be short and sweet. You're not going to waste. Your own time, you're also not going to waste the um, prospect's time. Right. Uh, we'll deal with it just now as to what is the right time to phone. There's a perception out there that salespeople are abrasive, adventurous, bold. That's the, that's the stereotype. They're fearless. Um, it's actually not the case. Very often, salespeople struggle to um, and they have a reluctance to prospect uh, to, to prospect they don't do it they they doesn't matter how well they trained they are and how many times they've done it there is a reluctance sometimes for them to do the prospecting um, regardless of how important it is and how much they realize the importance of that the reasons for the reluctance could be that they're worrying about the worst case scenario they, they, they hate um, they hate being said no to they spend too much time um, 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 to prepare, um, they're not necessarily um, confident enough, and they feel that they are going to come across um, and appear as as being pushy because that's the image that often um, that often has been um, labelled to the salesperson who's making a tele call. Um, they might feel intimidated by people with prestige or a certain um, or a certain um, image. Um, they might feel inferior because they uh, are in the career of sales, and we've no, uh, determined already that that's as far as possible from the truth. Um, it can't be further from the truth. Um, then, also, um, let's see, let me quickly. I'll go to the next slide for you. Right. Um, to overcome this is often to sometimes just listen to other people. Uh, there's a scene also in the Wolf of Wall Street. I'm, um, my apologies if I use this um, um, uh, elaborately, but um, there are so many good and bad experiences in that movie that apply to this particular module. Um, I think it was his first day at work. He was just actually, uh, he was told, pick up the phone and phone... Put the phone down, phone the next guy. Put the phone down, phone the next guy. And he actually sat back and he started listening. He started listening to how other salespeople were conversing. And by listening to all the excuses that other people make the whole time, um, um, it helps you not to use the same, not to fall into that trap yourself. Set specific goals for yourself. Understand the, econ um, the economic value of the um, of the prospecting activity. Um, that goes hand in hand with the planning. If you're planning thoroughly, you're not going to waste any time because you realize that time is money, and you will uh, understand the economic value. Um, and then stop being negative. Surround yourself with positive people. Um, we're always um, um, not always. We're often we um, take us uh, we over evaluate um, and we um, we find ourselves in, in in that predicament that we start doubting ourselves um, remember always what i said many times before uh, in previous sessions the customer is not saying no to you the customer is saying no to the product don't take it personal right we're almost done with time-wise as well as with this chapter, remember that you are calling the prospect to meet their needs. You're not trying to make a sale. The sale will come if you focus on meeting the customer's needs. Learn 
and apply whatever makes you relax. There are different techniques. I've shared with you the technique that Matthew McConaughey used as a, as a broker um, on Wall Street in that movie, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and keep on repeating what you're doing successfully. What works will continue to work. Remember at the start of the chapter, that diagram, it says 70, 20, 10 rule. 70% of what works, you have to do again because it works. 20% do what your competitors do because um, then you learn different techniques. And 10% are creative, new things that nobody, not even them, your competitors have done before. Uh, try that. Right. Um, to finish off this chapter, I'm going to leave you with that quote on the screen. Prospecting, you know, is a continuous process. You have to do it because you are going to lose customers. They're going to go to, through different cycles in their, in their lives. Um, and therefore, you have to uh, ensure that um, you keep on filling your funnel of prospects all the time. Right. Not following up with your prospects. It's like filling your bath with water, but you haven't put the plug in. It will just flow away. It will be of no use. Okay. Any questions, anybody at this point? Those of you who are still with me, thanks. Um, what I will do now is I will follow up with, um, with um, Stadio as to what the timetable changes could mean and imply. If they do, um, the next session, the next time that we see each other would be on Wednesday, okay, um, according to my timetable. Um, let, just before I finish, um, can anybody enlighten me? Was it only the Monday that was a clash or were the other days, other periods that clashed as well? Uh, so I'm pretty sure it's just the Monday. Just the Monday. Mm. Okay, I will follow up with them. Um, we'll see each other again when we chat. Oh, we'll see each other. I would love to see all of you. I've never met any of you face to face. Um, I would love to um, obviously do that, but unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. What I will do is uh, I will follow up with Stadio now as to the possible clashes on a Monday for the 8th and the 9th period. Um, and we can address that when we chat again uh, for our session on Wednesday. All good? Right, so if, um, I'm going to finish um, or stop the recording for this session. Thank you very much. Uh, I suggest now for the ninth period, starting at five past two, attend the other session. Uh, in the meantime, I will address the issue with Stadio about the clashes. Thanks very much for your time and thanks very much for the help you've given me. I was not aware of this clash at all and my apologies. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll chat again on Wednesday.